you doing? I'm Mel Sharp. For the last 30 years, I've been America's only full-time man-on-the-street interviewer. It's been a real study in human nature. And in the next few minutes, I'd like you to meet some of the characters I've bumped into along the way. It all began right here in San Francisco in 1964 in a boarding house where I met James P. Coyle. Coyle was a guy who loved to put people on. I was intrigued by his bizarre sense of humor, and together we formed the team of Coyle and Sharp. Coyle believed in two things, finding a good premise and always keeping a straight face. This is another in our series, Street Audition. Every day I bring a talented young person on the street with me. He auditions and we get the reaction of a passerby. Now we've stopped a gentleman. Your name, please? Leonard Susky. Leonard, I'd like you to meet James P. Coyle. How do you do, James? Glad to meet you, Leonard. Leonard, Mr. Coyle has a rather uh, strange talent. He is what is called a warbler, and this is unusual. I'm sure you haven't seen it before, but will you listen to his audition and give him an audition? You will. I sure will. Okay, Mr. Coyle, are you ready? Yes. I call this Horizon Lost 3 over 4. All right, this is our talent of the day, James P. Coyle, a warbler. <laughs> Very much. Now, would you step back for a second while I get the gentleman's reaction to your warbling? Now, sir, would you give me an honest reaction uh, to this fellow's talent? Well, to be truthful, which it doesn't sound like a warbler. What does it sound like? Well, uh, it sounds like uh, it's gargling his throat. I'll be real quick. And you really think that you're qualified to judge my talent? No, I'm not. How about, Mr. Cole, one more brief rendition? I'd like to give him an honest break. Yes, one more brief word. I want to give you an honest break. I call this... The sun goes down, but man continues singing. Okay, fine, fine. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Would you step back now for just one more second? One more second. Okay, it's interesting to tell you, this gentleman actually had a problem in his life. When he was a child, he was actually in his carriage when he was at the trip with his mother. He was attacked by a large bird. He thinks he's a bird. And what I'm trying to do today is just get somebody to give him a favorable recommendation. It will help him out psychologically. You did say, however, that my, my performance was better. You, you were able to feel some artistic merit to it. A little bit uh, on that last one, but not on the first. Why must you consider me as a person like everybody else? Why can't you consider me? As a bird, in a sense. What do you want me to call you? A cock robin or something? Or... And now what you're going to see, it's like a Marx Brothers movie, but it's real. In a moment, we're inside proposing a toast to the ladies. We do. Uh, would we say this one, please? Uh, we have our way of having the toast, and uh, this we may show you now. We say one word, cache. You see, cachet. Cachet. Mm. Simply, we are all together. So, may we all say, we raise the glass, we say cachet, and then we also do one thing, which you may not do, uh, which you may like. We toss uh, the glass. In 1968, when Coyle got himself elected to the California State Assembly, I had to survive on my own. So for the next few years, I traveled to some fascinating places doing short films and commercials. Arthur Treacher. Arthur Treacher's fish and chips are opening up in the United States. They're going to be serving the same fish and chips that you get right here in Maylands, right in East London. Bob, do you like Arthur Treacher's fish and chips? Well, I've never had them, to tell the truth, but... Mailing's fish and chips I like very much. You have never had Arthur Treacher's fish and chips? No, I've never had Arthur I'll Treacher's tell you what, uh, for the purposes of this spot, what I'd like you to do, because we want somebody on here that likes Arthur Treacher's fish and chips, somebody from London, it's really going to help sell a product. Would you say now, the next time I ask you the question, that you love Arthur Treacher's fish and chips? Okay. I'll say that, yes. Okay. Bob, how do you feel about Arthur Treacher's fish and chips? I love Arthur Treacher's fish and chips. Harness racing. <laughs> Tonight at Hollywood Park. Can you win? Ah, 
That's a winnie? That's a winnie, but yeah. <laughs> what do you like about uh, harness racing? I like the, uh, the horses. I like to see them run. Oh, hit them over. Here they go. The harness races. Nice. Yeah. Hollywood Park. <laughs> You're really excited about harness. I'm excited. Why are uh, you excited? Why am I excited? It's my makeup. I'm excitable. Okay, now let's hear that winnie. Excitable. <laughs> So, the head of the L.A. school system made me shut off the projector when I showed him this film. Une cuillère. Une fourchette. Une fourchette. Une adresse. Un timbre. La langue. Une carte postale. Won't you come along with me? Come along with me. Up the Mississippi. Up the Mississippi. We'll go to the place where the folks all meet. Hit it. Heaven on a they call the Basin State. Are we on the Mississippi now? We are in Chappaya River. Bangkok. If somebody wants to order fish in a yeah. Thai language, how do they do it? They should order kung, kang, pu, pa, pa, ka, pung, pa, ka, rang, or something like this. Would you say that again a little faster? Kung, kang, pu, pa, pa, ka, rang, pa, kao, and... And yeah. what else is there? Yeah, pa, pa, bu, ho, kom, kom, something. Okay, let's have five fish. You five could've... fish is here. Yeah, pa, ka, rang, pa, kao, pa, chao, hu, and yeah, pa, bu, ho, kom, kom. Kop, kang, pu, pa, kung, hoi, pu, yeah. ma, lai, something like this. <laughs> In 1965, Leavenworth, Washington, population 1,500, was just a dying truck stop. Then, the citizens voted to go Bavarian. They rebuilt their village and turned it into a booming mecca for tourists. Welcomen zu Leavenworth. How do you like living in a, uh, in a Bavarian village? Have you oh, lived? I love it. I've Why? been here 10 years. I've been in the area for 16. What part of Bavaria were you born in? <laughs> Spokane, Washington. <laughs> That's pretty Bavarian. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. <laughs> Did everybody laugh that much when they mentioned the word Spokane? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Spokane. <laughs> Spokane. <laughs> Spokane. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, uh, I learned everything I know about singing I got from Sonny Bono. It's the Sonny Comedy Review. My, I owe my career to Sonny uh, Bono. Juliet Prowse has a gift that Sonny Bono needs badly. Badly. Now, what is it? Here it is. Now, what are those? They're a pair of rhinestone seven-inch platform shoes. Now, will Sonny Bono now be the biggest man on uh, television this fall? Well, I think he thinks that anyway, doesn't he? It's the Sonny Comedy Review. ABC's asking Mel Torme about Sonny Bono. Who grew up listening to Sonny Bono? Well, didn't we all? Didn't we all? I mean, really. He's an institution, a legend. Well, let's not go crazy. <laughs> let's say that he's, he's a factor in today's television firmament. It's the Sonny Comedy Review. skiddle da ba doo dee da doo da bono A Sonny Bono, a funny Bono. I got my funny Bono right here in my little elbow. Mm. Which one of these people would you talk to if you were a street interviewer? I pick people who look me in the eye. They're curious. Pickpockets and shy people look the other way. I pick people with animated body language, strong voices, and something to say. Hey, no, Harry. No. Okay. Yourself? You don't have to. Hey, I'll, no. Okay. Close okay. my do close my door. Okay. No, don't close the door. He, he, he. You have a dog, don't you? No, I hate animals. Any chance we could just put this ostrich in your car for about ten minutes? <laughs> you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. What do you mean? What are you gonna do? What? She'll just go to sleep in the back seat. Oh, you kidding? Oh no, 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 no. she, she lays right down. She lays right down. Australian ostrich, <laughs> not my little car. Just put hey, it in man. the Hey, Roger. Put it in, Roger. Close, I'll take care of it. Close my door. Not our cameraman, Bo Keller, is already inside the lobby of this motel with his camera hidden in a suitcase. Hello. Hi. Excuse, how are you doing today? Just fine. Um, I uh, 
was wondering, do you have any place here? Do you have any doubles available right now? Uh, you mean one bed or two? Yeah, king-sized bed. Okay, we have rooms with one king. Uh-huh. And how much are they? It would be 60. Okay. And would it be the same price for the two of us as it is for one person? It would be. Okay. Uh, any chance you could show her the room? No. One of the big changes in the last 30 years that I've noticed, uh, it used to be really hard to get women to stop and talk to you on the street. Now... I can stand on my hands and do back bends. Can you really? Yes. You want to do one right here on the street? <laughs> no, thank you. What? <laughs> no, thank you. Well, we need this. This is, you know, this is your chance on TV. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you hold my purse. Okay. <laughs> now, what are you going to do? I'm going to do a back bend. Okay. You better take my glasses, okay. too. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. <laughs> That was great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I better what? go before you ask me to do something worse than that. <laughs> I can whistle through one nostril. Listen, shh, no one. I can't do it right now. Shh. Well, I'm going to make my leg disappear. You're going to make his leg disappear here. Is the judge ready? Okay. Are we ready over there? Okay, the judge is ready. Are you ready? Okay. Here it goes. All the, right. The code is to conceal how I do it. The code is to conceal how he okay, does it. Okay, here goes. Here goes. Here goes. That's I amazing. Did it. His I did leg it. disappeared. I did it. What do we give him on the judging here? The Body Olympics give him an eight and a half. Oh, well, here's a tip for you if you want to be a man on the street interviewer. There's going to be one of those times when suddenly you have to ask a terribly trite question and you don't want to do it. Well, forget it. Just walk up to somebody and say, what's your favorite fish? Come here. <laughs> Well, this is, a, this is a dramatic moment in American history. Geraldine Ferraro has just accepted the vice presidential nomination, the first woman to be nominated for vice president. Is this exciting? Extremely exciting. Looking forward to an extremely successful Okay, November. what's your favorite fish? My favorite fish? Yeah. Tuna. What is it? Tuna. Tuna, okay. <laughs> How you doing? Are you excited about this? Very proud to be a woman tonight. It was okay. a marvelous speech. Okay, we always ask this. What's your favorite fish? <laughs> sea bass. Sea bass. Mine too. I'm from Puerto Rico. What's your favorite fish? Fish? Yeah. What do you mean? What's your favorite fish? What do you like? I love uh, codfish. Codfish. <laughs> Governor of Arizona, how you doing? Look, it's a historic moment. It was a terrific speech. She's really the master of her style. Uh, okay. It's really upbeat. Governor of Arizona, what's your favorite fish? Striped bass. Striped bass. All right, you heard it from the governor. Thanks a lot. He spoke to every issue that concerns America today. What is your favorite fish? <laughs> <laughs> Fish? Yeah. <laughs> Where are you from? Washington, D.C. What is your favorite fish? What am I supposed to say? Why what are you is, asking that question? What do you mean? Do you say What's your favorite? Salmon. Salmon, okay. What's your favorite fish? My favorite what? Fish. Trout. Trout. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Here's a simple street game that'll only cost you 25 cents. Take your quarter, put it in the news rack, open it up, take your fish, Put it inside, slam the door, <laughs> then stand back and see what happens. <laughs> oh! You know about the fish in there? No, what's happening? You don't know about that? Oh my god. <laughs> Pass it back to her. <laughs> now, we're not talking about that kind of dribbling. Oh, we're not? No, we're talking about dribbling, oh, no! <laughs> dribbling water. Okay. All right, are you ready? Uh, sure. Okay, here okay. we go. Let's watch you dribble here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this is exciting. College basketball. We're at Maples Pavilion at Stanford University. College basketball is exciting, especially when you have a can of air and an inflatable mic. Do you think that there's any chance that Stanford's going to blow this game? Is it going to blow up on them? Nah, no way. Why is that? It's just a home game. We're undefeated at home, man. Yeah. I don't know. You don't think they can blow it up in the last no minute? Uh-huh. Why do you feel that way? We got to lick the animal. It's the inflatable microphone. You are captain Code. of the San Francisco Police yes. Department. Okay, you know, we're just talking about, you know, you work in public life. Is it difficult to really 
know what's going on 50 yards from your own office in a city like this? Sometimes it is. What makes that difficult? So many people, so many things happening. Uh-huh. Are we still rolling here? Yeah. yeah. What makes it so difficult to know what's going on right under your own nose? Well, you can't see that well. So now, under rent... Yeah. My tie? Yeah. What is it? Is it a... Uh... Does that look okay now? <laughs> what's wrong? <laughs> I'm looking for someone that looks like this in this neighborhood. Have you spotted anyone around here that looks like this? Yeah. Have you seen anybody? Hi. We're looking for a guy that looks nope. like this in the neighborhood here. Have you seen anybody that looks like that? No, I live now. Nope, I'm here every day. You're here every day? I'm the host of the North Beach. Oh, you're host of North Beach? You haven't spotted the guy. Okay, thanks a lot. Some people just don't pay attention. But generally, folks in big cities have learned to live with the unexpected. For today's street poll, we've come to one of the most popular singles bars in town. We're looking for the truth. The question, are all men liars? 99.9% .9 that I've met. 99, what do they lie about? They're aged if they're employed. Uh -huh. They lie about how much money they make. Uh -huh. They lie about what kind of car they drive. Yeah. Their hometown, uh -huh. their sign. The check's in the mail, I love you. Yeah. You know the three famous lines. What they really want from me. And they always lie about where they take vacations. Really? Yeah. Well, what do you mean, if they say they're going to Hawaii? Because they really don't go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> okay, are all men liars? Everybody except for my husband, Dave. <laughs> you want to say something, sir? I just want to say that I'm a chauvinist, and it's a man's privilege to lie to a woman. What? And most women enjoy it to be lied to. Most men are liars. Uh -huh. And those that you don't think are liars are awfully good at it. A man has to know what a woman wants to hear. And if he has the right sensitivity to tell her what she wants to hear, there will be bliss and happiness there. All men are not liars. Absolutely not. Uh -huh. When's the last time you told a lie to a woman? Uh, About <laughs> seconds ago. <laughs> no comments. This is the 50th anniversary of the bridge, and this is the first time since opening day in 1937 that pedestrians have been invited to flood the roadway. God, it's magnificent. Yeah. I can't believe this many people got up this early to have such a good time. All right. How's your bridge? My bridge? You have it's a bri still suspending. Thank you. Do you have a bridge in there? <laughs> yes. I All do. right, this is Dr. Reese here. Hi, Dr. Reese. Check your bridge. Yeah, we're yeah. going to check your bridge today. I see. We are. Yeah. 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 Could you take the bridge out for us, sir? No. <laughs> Please. No. All right, anybody else here with a bridge? What's that? You have a bridge? He's got a removable bridge. <laughs> That's, That's right. This is it. Tonight, we're at the Oakland Coliseum. The Raiders have come back for a historic exhibition game. What do you think is more important to these fans? What's more important to you, football or Swan Lake? These are my Raiders, and I want them back. Yeah, yeah. When's the last time you saw Swan Lake? Swan who? I ain't never saw Swan Lake. You have a tooth with Raiders engraved on it. You got it. I can't see all these guys in leotards out here with, with 60,000 people. I can't see it. I'll tell you what. Look what we have for you. A tutu. All right. <laughs> Swan Lake, beautiful song. Beautiful song. How you doing? How you feel about Swan Lake? Swan Lake. All right. Why not? Can we just see one ballet move right here? <laughs> see, now that's elegant, isn't it? This is culture at its best. The Raiders! No, no. Yes! All right, we know that. But how, how do you feel about Swan Lake? Swan Lake, where's Swan Lake at? Hello, kitty, kitty. You know, we talk differently to cats than we do to people. I'm going to put this little kitty on top of our lens and find out why. Kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, you're so cute. Wait, do you... <laughs> Hi, kitty. Amelia. Amelia. Are you hungry? Yeah. Come and give me love. Who did this? Now you tell me right now, who did this? Squeak? Who did this? Who did this? You tell me right now. What do you think you're doing? Who did this, Squeak? Who did this?
Here at the World Series today, we're going to give some lucky fan $5 if he'll eat his World Series ticket. Would you? No way. Oh, come on now. How about putting her ticket in the uh, hamburger here? Oh, sure. $500? Yeah, sir, come here. Come here. Why, why, put your, put your ticket there. Why, why here? Why, yeah, yeah. Put your ticket in the hamburger. No! Okay. No, no, no. Put that top on it. No, no, no. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> eat, 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 eat. <laughs> <laughs> no way. You know, when you're out on the street, it's great to have a prop, like, you know, like a jar of flies. My cameraman found a guy that actually breeds flies. But what are you going to do with them? Well, the killer bees are coming, and everyone's worried about bugs. How about you? What insect gives you the creeps? Cockroaches. cockroaches. What? The cockroaches. What? Is it the crunch or the cockroach? <laughs> huh? it, the cockroach. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for talking. We have some house flies for you here. <laughs> what the hell is that, man? Flies. I can't hit a fly. You said you could hit a fly. <laughs> you said. <laughs> Keep your eye on the fly. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. Well, look, there's one on Sunny right up there in the hair. We just have this white background so that we can see the flies coming out of the jar, okay? <laughs> okay. Oh, gee. <laughs> three and two count on Jennifer. Here's the wind up in the pitch. Strike three. You're what? out. Out. <laughs> out. What are you blowing? It was right in the zone. God. Strike three. You're oh, out. Bullshit. Bullshit. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Out. Bullshit. That was a foul. That was a ball. Out. That was a ball. Get a clue, Blue! How can he? Strike three, oh, you're no. out! No, 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 now wait a minute. You're out! No, no, you're wait. Out of here. no wait a minute, don't God. kill him up. Out, out! What did you say? Holy mackerel. <laughs> How did it feel telling off the empire? Oh, man, I can't wait. Can I do it again? Sure, go ahead. Hey, man, I told you. Don't get out of here. You're out! Here's the tomato. There's the tomato. You gotta squash it on your head. Right here. Okay, with the squash rack. Are you ready? Ready? All right. Did you ever try and get a doctor over the Christmas vacation? It's like impossible. Well, that's what happened to Sandra and I, and the next episode, Sandra on a Gurney, is based on that. I wondered if you could please help me a little. The uh, needle fell out of my IV and my doctor's on the phone. Could you please tell him? Yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. Long time since I've been up on the slopes, and what I want to try and do is I'll get the skis in. You need him? Could you get him? Yeah. I think, I think he's busy calling another doctor to find out what to do. Oh, but could you get him over here? I just, yeah. I, I just yeah. want to know. Excuse me. What's going yeah. on? Could I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Have you ever driven up to Lake Tahoe? Yes, I have. Okay. How would I get there from here? I'm going to be driving up. Dr. Khan and I are going skiing today. Skiing? Yeah. Well, what about her? Mrs. Epstein. You gonna leave her here? No, no, no. We're gonna take her down to the office. Why? She oh. got a problem? Yeah, her IV fell out of her, her arm. Have you ever driven up to Tahoe? No, uh, I no. You I haven't? Have, no. See, I've got to get up to Tahoe. I've got a condominium up there. Yeah, I don't know. What I what I what I'd like to do is go skiing. See, in other words, I'll have the skis on the car. But I don't think I'm going to hit the area until about 4.30. Does this happen with these guys? Oh, oh well, I, I trust him. He's supposed to be really good, but... Have you driven up to Tahoe? Have you driven up there? Yeah. You go up to Sacramento, don't you? You just yeah. take 80 all the way up. 80 all the way up? I just bought a condo up there. Oh, how nice. Yeah, and I'm really anxious to get up there. Yeah. And really, this is my first trip. Do you have do you have do you have a do you have a wall on there showing who you do are? Do I have a wall? Yeah, I have a wall. See, I just want to see your identification showing that you are a physician. Okay. Or I'm going to. All right. I'm going to. There, that's me. There, that's my driver's license. Okay, we're Malcolm Sharp. Right, and I got a renewal. I have the stethoscope. See that? That doesn't mean a goddamn thing. I, I'm, yeah. I'll tell you what. I'm going to call the cops and have us. Okay. Have you arrested? Just push her down to the piano store. I'll have Dr. Kushner get her. I'll be at lunch. I'm going to Fisherman's Wharf. Is that no, okay? I'll tell you. I, if I had a second, I would. But yeah. I, you're not going to leave her here, are you? No, no, she's in your hands here. No, but I'm going to go eat. Well, that's it. 30 years and 30 minutes. Uh, believe me, it's really hard to find 30 good minutes from your entire life. I want to thank everybody who talked to me uh, during this anniversary show and the thousands of other people that I've interviewed over the last three decades. 
I've always enjoyed your humor and your generosity. Life can be a piece of cake. Come on, you want to have a piece of cake? Yeah, sure. Let's have a piece of cake. Yeah, this is great here. Where do you get the handcuffs on for? Huh? Where do you get the handcuffs on for? The handcuffs. What are you getting for? I, I was, uh, I mean, I was at a correctional facility this morning. All right, so here's the down payment here on the thing. And, What's uh, this, though? Handcuffs. No way. No. It's just right. a, No, no, just take, take a hike. Yeah. Well, what do you got there? I got about 900 bucks there. Huh? And we take a test what? ride? <laughs> huh? What else do you have there? What do you mean? Are you, are you wanted for anything? Oh, the handcuffs. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. The handcuffs aren't any big deal. You I was got at a... something under that coat? Huh? What Are do you mean? Serious, Larry? Do you need the deposit? What, you mean on this car? Yeah. Well, I'll take a deposit and write it up if you want. Yeah. Come on, the office. Okay. okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's that's wild. I mean, what do? You, what's your story? So, what are you suggesting? Well, I'm suggesting why don't we call a cab? Yeah. And have them take you to pick up your mother, or yeah. take you to the airport, or whatever you want to do. You know. Yeah. And, uh, well, I'd rather take the you know, test ride in this later. car, huh? Yeah, but I, I can't take you for a test ride. I mean, it's... You said before you could. Yeah, but what's, what's with the handcuffs? Yeah. They're just handcuffs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're just handcuffs. My kid is a magician, you know? My kid put these handcuffs on me. In fact, when I stopped here today, I was on my way down to... Uh, there's a key place down here. I'm going to have them off now. You got a hacksaw here Terrific. at the place? No, as a matter of fact, we don't have any hacksaw. I can't take you for a demo ride. Yeah. And uh, how about if I call you a cab and, and get you out of here, okay? I mean... You're going to call me a cab? Nothing personal. I'll call you a cab. Do you want to tell me a little about the tires down here? Um, the, the TAs, they're really uh -huh. nice. They're really, yeah. they, they handle real well. Uh-huh. I don't know. I kind of like it. Let me ask you this. Do you, do you have any questions here? I mean, you look kind of puzzled. That's, that's what I'm well, curious about. What's your question? I've got handcuffs on, and I, I'm, got, I'm nervous. <laughs> Let me just... Come over here with me. No, what's that? Get the, the if you could just walk over here with me. Come yeah. Wait. Now you're on the street. Yeah. We'd like you to stay on the street. I can't go back here and get a car? See, that's correct. Uh, hey, i got to take that car back up. Thanks. Thank Give you very much. Good you luck, want... Thanks for coming in. Best of luck to Good you. Luck. I can't get a car. Nice to see you. Thank you.